All right, welcome to our video on relations and functions. So today we're going to define what a relation is, see some examples, and then we're also going to do the same for functions. A relation uh, is, is something that can be modeled by a set of ordered pairs. It can be, it doesn't always have to be. Um, but the idea here is an ordered pair you can think of as an x and y value. Uh, so that first element is the x value in that ordered pair, and it comes from the set of the domain. Okay, the second element is the y value, and that comes from the set called the range. We'll discuss domain and range at a later time. And the important thing to remember is relations don't always have to be ordered pairs. Most commonly, you'll see them as ordered pairs, and mostly what we'll study as relations as ordered pairs. But for example, I just came up, you know, you could have triangle comma three, pentagon comma five, and my set of uh, my set could be here of polygons and here for the X part and the Y part here would be considered the, um, the number of sides that that polygon has. So obviously if you think of an X chord you can't graph a pentagon on the X axis so that's no longer really an ordered pair. So what is a function? Okay, it's, it's pretty easy to define uh, but for students it's, it's harder to to grasp the idea of a function. A function is a relation. Okay, so it can be modeled by a set of order a set of ordered pairs. However, there's a catch to what a function can be. No two ordered pairs have the same x value. Okay, and they have different they can have different y values. So really the idea here is when you look at a set of ordered pairs, um, you don't want to see an x repeat. If you see an x repeat there could be a problem. So there's four ways we represent functions, four common ways. They are tables, mapping diagrams, the graph, and an equation. So the idea here is I, I just kind of took a, a table of values and, and represented them different ways. So an easy way to see if something's a function from a table, just look at all your x values here. They're all different. That means you have a function. Now if you look at negative 2 and 4 and 0 and 4, you have two different x values going to the same y value, that's okay. You just don't want to see an x value value repeat or you, you won't have a function then. So the idea here is different x values, you're really going to see a function real quickly. Mapping diagram is a real common way to look at uh, functions or relations. It's an easy way for me. The first bubble here is your x values or your inputs. Uh, your y values are the second bubble and those are your outputs. So domain values, range values here. And again, negative 2 maps to 4. So negative 2 to 4, negative 1 to 3, 0 to 4, 1 to 7, 2 to 12. So you don't see two arrows going from any of these input values. A, a quick graph, uh, here is the just graph of y equals x squared and I wrote it as an equation. Polynomials are going to be functions, any polynomial you talk about, linear, quadratic, cubic, um, and you can easily tell that by if the, the graph passes the vertical line test. So those are four ways we represent functions, and now we're going to look at some examples where we have to determine if the relation is actually a function. Okay, so in example one, are the relations below functions? The relations because they're sets of ordered pairs. They're collections of ordered pairs. So I just quickly scan the x values. One, four, and three, they're all different. They all have a y value. I have a function. So this is a function because each x in the domain is unique. And by unique, we mean different. So they can have the same y values. These x values can have the same y values as long as they're different. Okay? So, um, in part B, I highlight, uh, I look at the set of word pairs, and I look at one, and I look at one here. So I notice I see a repeat of my x value. And this one maps to two, and then this one maps to five. So we don't have a function there, because the x value, the input, maps to two different numbers. So it's kind of confusing. So it's like, which is it? Is it one, or is it two, or is it five? I don't know. So, uh, the second relation is not a function because one x value repeats and it has two different uh, y values. In the third one we see one, four, and five. The x values are all different. Okay, So yeah, that's a function because each domain value is unique. It, if the x values are all different, it doesn't matter what the y values are. The y value can repeat, that's fine. 
okay? So it doesn't matter if this was 1, 4 and this is 0, 4. Because those x's are different, you're going to have a function. Uh, and so it doesn't matter what the y values are. So again, this first example shows uh, relations are one of our ways to represent uh, functions uh, as ordered pairs. So first one's a function because all x's are different. Uh, second uh, relation is not a function because one repeats. And the third relation is a function because all the x values are different. So in example two now, we're going to look at a mapping diagram, two of them, and determine whether or not these are these relations are functions. So classify each relation as a function or not a function, and you need to be able to explain why they're not a function. So I just picked a couple of quick values here, 1, 2, and 3, 3, 2, and 1. And notice, there's only one go arrow going from each of my input values and my x values. This is a function. Every x value is unique. It's different, and they all map to an output value. So this first relation is a function. In the second part here, the, in part B, I use the same numbers, okay, just to demonstrate that we have a problem here. One maps to one, two maps to two, but three maps to three, and three also maps to one, so we have double arrows coming from that three. Okay, so the value of three has two ordered pairs, three, one, and three, three. So this is not a function because our x value repeats and it has different y values. So when you see that double arrow there leaving from one of your input values, you know you're going to have a problem. Okay, so uh, this graph here, we're going to classify, this is our third method to, to demonstrate how to represent a function, and it's graphing. So classify each of the followings, following uh, f as functions or non-functions. And a quick way to determine this is a vertical line test. If you draw a vertical line through your graph and it hits the graph more than once, you don't have a function. So I look at A, and if I draw that vertical line, A maps to a positive value, and A maps to a negative value. So A would have two outputs. This is not a function. It fails the vertical line test. So not a function because A has two different outputs. A can go to, we could call this B, A goes to B, and then A goes to C down there if we'd like. So that first one's not a function. You may say the same thing over here. This is a step function, okay? Uh, this is a function, however, even though you see that these values are above one another, these circles are open. So if I draw a vertical line through here, You'd say, well, it hits here and here, so we don't have a function. However, you have to be careful. This has open circles, so you can include that value there. So this graph, this integer, greatest integer function, or step function, passes the vertical line test, and so this would be a function. Lastly, we're going to look at equations, ways to represent functions, okay, or relations. Now, we're going to, again, classify these relations as functions. And so I look at the first example, y equals 2x plus 3. That's a linear equation. Linear equation, quadratics, cubic equations, quartic, quintic, any polynomial equation is going to be a function, okay? This is linear. This is a function. Every x has one input, okay? Uh, in part B here, x equals y squared. Uh, this is not going to be a function because notice if you let x be 4, y could either be plus or minus 2. Okay, so you could have two values there. Uh, the, one of the ways you could do this, if you actually solve this for x, it could be plus or minus x. So uh, that's the big thing here. You can get two output values for y, okay? And 3x equals 3, excuse me, c, part c, x equals 3. This is also not a function. This is a vertical line. Um, so if x is 3, it has millions of different y values. Every, you know, 3, it's just vertical line. So every y value is included at 3. So that's not a function because 3 has infinitely many y values. 
Okay, so that's relations and functions. We defined relation, we defined function. There are four ways to represent function, functions, and we looked at four, these four methods and determined whether or not how we could define a function or a non-function. Okay, if you guys have any questions or comments, please uh, type them below or you can email me at nicholas.bennett at dc.gov. Thanks.